Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Who is as the wise man? Solomon talks a lot about the wise man and foolish man. And who knoweth the interpretation of things? God. Joseph said, do not interpretations belong to God? Then Daniel tell Nebuchadnezzar it came from God. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. It's confidence. When you know something, and you're sure you know it. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment. And that in regard of the oath of God. When a king has set forth. And you've seen him in the Old Testament. We're going to serve God. And we're going to do it right. And if we don't. You're going to suffer the penalty. We're going to make your house a, a dung house. You're under the capital punishment. If you don't serve God and do right. I don't know how you can say we're a biblical nation as a president because the presidents in the Bible were Babylonian, not. And the Bible's king, not not president. I mean, we we chose presidents after the Revolutionary War because we don't want to be like England. Uh, England that, that the sun never set on the British Empire until they changed their Bible. You mean that the church that had the open door that sent missionaries all over the world who came up with the King James Bible? You don't want to be like that nation? You mean the nation that the pilgrims came over that we're celebrating today, Thanksgiving? And you mean the congregational church that set up the new Israel, the new Zion? And we're going to build the, the 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 government, and you know if you don't if you don't obey our church and pay taxes to our our clergy, church and state, you know we're going to penalize you under the penalty of law. Of, of you mean the Christian nation, America, where they persecuted Bible believers and the separatists that were saved and loved the Lord Jesus Christ? You mean that Christian nation? You haven't been teaching the Pilgrim history. You haven't been teaching about uh, Boston. How the men in the black hats became the men of the persecutors of the men of the Bible. You got to know your church history. You mean the U.S. Constitution that gives us all right of all religions, where the God of the Bible says you're not supposed to support all religions? You mean that one? You mean that Christian nation where we allow gods and other gods and goddesses, where we kick Jesus Christ out, we kick Jesus and the Bible out of the schools and out of the courtroom, and we allow the Catholics in and we allow the Muslims in? You mean that Constitution, Christian government? You know, there were no revivals, the Great Awakenings. I'm not talking about the latter ones. I'm talking about the first two Great Awakenings. You know, that there were no Great Awakenings in this country that were bible sense and God-honored when there was no President of the United States. George Washington came after the Great Awakenings. Check your Bible history. Check your church history. The ruler in the Bible is a king. Be not hasty to go out of his sight, the king's sight, God's sight. Stand not in the evil thing, anything wicked. For he doeth whatsoever pleases him. The king, God. You know, our presidents do whatsoever they want to do, sin and rebel. When was the last president of the United States that stood up and said, Jesus Christ is the one and the only one? Queen Victoria said, I would love to have Jesus Christ come right now because I'll get off my throne and I'll have him to sit on my throne of England. You haven't had any king or president of the United States 
I'll give the Oval Office to Jesus Christ. You haven't had anyone say that. Where the word of a king is, there is power. So we've got the presidential James 1611 Bible. No, we have the King James 1611 Bible. Now we have American Standard Bible, which is junk and garbage. Hey, listen, America is not my home. New Jerusalem is my home. I'm a pilgrim. I'm a missionary sent by God. Shall I get into that Jesus is never called king of the church or shall I just keep kicking the president and the office and the lies? One nation under God. No, one nation under God's. Where the word of a king is, there is power. King James, but there's no other Bible with a king name added to it. You know what James means? You know what James? It means Jacob. You know what Jacob is? Jacob is Israel, the son of the 12 tribes. Who may say unto him, the king, what doest thou? You know, the leadership of the President of the United States, the Senate can back, you can turn him down, the House can turn him down. The House Speaker could turn him down. The governors could turn him. They're saying right now with, with President Biden, if I don't know, he's president, he's not president. But right now, President Biden, right now, he's going to call for everybody in the country to wear a mask because of COVID-19. There are five governors of five states. Florida, one of them. We're not doing that. Do you know what would happen in, in the Bible times under Daniel, under Nebuchadnezzar, under Judah, under Israel, under Assyria, under Nineveh? You, you know what would happen if you walked up to the king in China, the emperor? You know what you told that king in, in, in English history of, of England? You told that king, I ain't going to do what you're going to tell me to do. Your head would not be located with your body very soon. Or you would be hanging on gallows. I'm just telling you the truth. You know why America doesn't want monarchy? Because we don't want that one man to rule. I guess you don't want Jesus Christ to rule because he's king of kings and lord of lords. That's why you'd rather have Donald Trump. Because he's not king. Not a Christian either. Never heard him say it. I thought you were going to get off. I'm not on an election. We're talking about a king. I'm telling you, just between the king and the president. Whoso keepeth the commandment of the king shall feed. Feel no evil thing. Listen, when you do what is proper, when you obey the king, the monarch, and God, nothing bad is going to happen to you, common sense. Especially with God. Now, you may get a corrupt government. You may get a government that's against God, against the Bible, and you're going to live right, and you got Fox's Book of Martyrs. But that wasn't a rulership. That was a religion called the Catholic Church. The Pope is a king. It's all he is with religious order, who wants to conquer lands in the name of Jesus Christ, of course. Taking part of... What God told Israel. Go in there and conquer all the nations. God never told anybody on this side of Calvary. It's funny how they will say church and state, you know, we don't conquer like they like God told Israel. But then we want to follow the the the, the tithing of the law. We want to follow, you know.
and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. That's what life goes around. It goes around time and judgment. Whether you're right, whether you're wrong, whether you're guilty, whether you're innocent. And judgment is of the king. Let me ask you a question. Who was when two harlots had two children and one of the mothers overlaid the child and the child died and she took the other baby into her bosom and put the dead baby into the other woman? Who judged that? King Solomon. What has the President of the United States ever judged? We got the Supreme Court. <laughs> you mean the Supreme Court that says you can't have prayer in the Bible in the schools? You know, the President of the United States would say, right now, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Savior. Jesus Christ will be allowed in the public schools. Jesus Christ in the Bible will be allowed in, in the courtroom. The Supreme Court would say, no. Can't have that. But you can kill babies. You know what a king would say? We're going to serve God, and if you don't like it, under execution. Well, we don't. Execute him. King Monarch has that extreme authority and power. That's what God and Jesus Christ is. The supreme authority. The theopathy. The theopathy. That means God is supreme. Israel, Israel sinned when they said, we want a king like the nation. And you do not go against the commandment of a king. It's a joke in America when the president makes a ruling, makes a law, and the people of the land, <laughs> who cares? Because to every purpose there is a time and judgment, that's life. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. Why? Time gets old. So do you. Time breaks down. So do you. There is injustice of man. You don't get what is rightfully yours. You don't get the right credit. There is improper judgment. There is bribery. There is crooked judges. Wait till we stand before the judge of all the earth. Wait till we stand before God the Father and God the Son at the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne. It will be made right by then. And there is no time at the great white throne judgment. Time has stopped. The great white throne judgment is an eternity future. The judgment seat of Christ, there's time. Seven years on the earth, the time of Jacob's trouble. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? With man and his judgment. You can have all the facts laid out. Well, he didn't read his Miranda rights, so you got to throw it out of court. And a criminal walks away because of one technical, te technical problem. But when God, when God will set forth his judgment, when God says, guilty, you're not going to take it to the appeals court. There is no appeals court. You're not going to take it to the advocate, the judge, because Jesus Christ is the advocate, the judge. And he's all powerful and all knowing. Life is time and judgment. Is that a red light or is that a green light? 
I just pulled out of the refrigerator a black head of lettuce. Do I make salad with it or do I throw it in the garbage? I unscrewed a cap of milk and whoo whoa. Do I drink it or do I pour it down the drain? And there'll be people who come up to me as a street preacher. And judge not least, she be judge, but you're judging me. And we are lacking in judgment today, and it's forever. You will be driving down the road, and some guy just boot out right in the middle of the street without looking left or right. That's improper judgment. Oh, I have the right to sue if you hit me. Not if I kill you. <laughs> Not if you end up in the hospital the rest of your life. Well, what's the money going to do? We have to judge everything. The Bible says we have to judge ourselves. We have to judge our sins. Solomon is the king and you obey what Solomon said. Or you face the penalty of the scepter of Solomon and whatever penalties will happen. And you got to go into the monarchs. Listen, Bloody Mary killed Christians in the name of, of, of her royalty, in the name of her religion, the Catholic Church. And our Christian brethren went to the faggots singing praises, quoting scripture. Under the dual rulership of Romans 13, we're to obey the powers that be. And when that was written by Paul and that was written by Peter, it was written under the Emperor Nero that was killing Christians left and right. And Paul and Peter said, obey the powers that be. Nero would take Christians and stick them on a pole and put tar on them and light them a fire and he would have a party and say, let the light of Jesus brighten my party. There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither has he the power in the day of death. Get the paddles, get CPR. And it is your time to go. Whatever medical instruments you have, when God says your day is numbered, your hour is up, it's gone. It's finished. You have entered into eternity. Now, God may grant us more time, and he does. But when that time is up, the time is up. And there is no discharge in that war. Death. Imagine someone, peace and no war. You're coming to a war one day. The, the Jehovah Witnesses do not believe in going to war because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. You're going to war. Solomon calls the battle of death, he calls it war. That's what he's talking about. There's no discharge from that war. What war? Death. And that war will take a life. Yours. Unless the rapture. Solomon don't know anything about the rapture. Solomon wants to think about Enoch. Solomon didn't know that Elijah's coming back to life in the tribulation period and he's going to die. I mean, he's right in the standpoint of living on the earth. Every man is going into battle. What's the battle? Death. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. The wick wickedness, the devil, and all that. See? You're going to die just as much as a right man, a just man we read the other night. All this I have seen, eyewitness, as much as, as John tells us, he was eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. He says, I've seen and applied my heart unto every work as done under the sun. He planted vineyards, he planted uh, 
gardens, he planted or orchards, he pour he drank, he got married, he got happy, he got sad, he looked at madness, he did this, he did that, he got gold, he got marriages, he got this, he did that, he tried that, he tried every work. Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes, the Holy Spirit tells us today, the Christian. I got to go live life. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. He'll tell you what life is. What is it? It's vanity. I want to go for the gusto. Vanity. I want to obtain riches. Vanity. I want the world. Vanity. And you're going to die. And die with what? They're going to put you in a hole in the ground. And you can have all your treasures. But you ain't going to enjoy them. Just ask the pharaohs. There is a time, and we did that in chapter 3, I think it was. There is a time where one man ruleth over another to his hurt. I don't like our president. Solomon said, yeah, okay, you're going to get a ruler. Germany had a ruler that did much hurt to Jewish people and Americans and English and Polish and when he went to war. I don't know who the, the, the Japanese emperor was during World War II, but he did a lot of damage to Americans. And Alexander the Great did much damage and hurt. Solomon said, hey, you ain't going to get the ruler you want all the time. And you may get a ruler that's going to give you hurt. That's life. That's vanity. And so I saw the wicked buried dead. Who had come and gone from the place of the holy. They went to the temple. You only bring up the modern English. I saw the wicked, he very he died, and he went to church. And they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. There have been wicked men, and they have gone to church, they've gone to temple, they've gone to uh, synagogue. They have gone to mosque and they die and their name dies out within time. You don't believe me. Walk to a, go into a, the nearest graveyard or cemetery and walk around and look at the names of the tombstones. How many do you know? Now, 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 if your family's there, okay, you're gonna know you're gonna know their names. But just typically walk into just pick any cemetery you've never been in and look at the names. How many are you gonna know? And there may be listen, I've been in a lot of cemeteries and with, with Baptist history and church history, I've been in a lot of a lot of cemeteries and famous men. And I read the tombstones of men and great stories. And listen, when you're, you're from Connecticut and when you read the tombstone, they have got some great stories. Especially ship captains who've been lost at sea. And their body's not in the ground. But there's a marker. And that's a wonderful, great story that his wife or his family put on his tombstone. But who is he? Maybe they lied. Maybe he wasn't lost at sea. Maybe he took off with another life. Style, you're devious. Well, <laughs> that's vanity. What were the names of the Babylonian soldiers, the Chaldeans, that killed and maimed 
the children of Judah when they came into Babylon and uh, came into Jerusalem destroyed. Who were they? They were mother's sons. They were they were husbands of wives that said goodbye, honey. Have a good day at the war. Isn't the Bible say? Isn't it Sennacherib's mother? Or I forget. His mother, oh, why is my son so so late coming? Where is his chariots? And, and her maid said, "Well, you know, they're dividing the spoil. No, mom, your son is dead." Psalm is told, "Here's a wicked man. He went to church. He went to he went to temple." And nobody knows his name. Nobody remembers his name. And he has no name. 